Well, the Nick Chubb restructured contract numbers are in, and it tells us, sadly, what I've been saying for months. We're going to talk about it. Your latest Lockdown Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd. And, you know, this time of year, I appreciate you guys all more, more than ever. Uh, you know, obviously not as much, you know, Browns physical content each and every day, just the draft prep. And you guys are phenomenal in being here every day. I thank you so much. The everyday crowd, be like the everyday crowd. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Before we get to everything else um thought we'd break this out for the day uh hollywood higgins uh christian kirksey um signing one day contracts and retiring from the nfl as cleveland browns when i first started these guys were players on this team they were parts of this team just wasn't a very good team in 2017 and 2018 Rashard higgins became a big part of that team christian kirksey was injured and if you remember there were so many post-game videos from christian kirksey just absorbing in that this franchise was finally winning uh two class gentlemen two gentlemen who played for the cleveland browns represented the cleveland browns like they were the best franchise in the nfl all the best to kirko all the best to hollywood two of my favorites in the time that i have been covering the cleveland browns now the news is saying as far as next Nick Chubbs' contract, and it's you know it's a base of around two million. They almost about two million dollars has come off. You know what Nick was scheduled to make in twenty twenty four, as opposed to what he is guaranteed for twenty twenty four. Now, sadly, this tells me, and I've been saying it for months. I don't think anybody even knows, not even Nick, when Nick Chubb will be capable of playing for this team in twenty twenty four. It's a fact. It's it's just it is. It's a very, very significant injury. Nick Chubb, when he injured that knee at the University of Georgia, October 10th, 2015. That was there were people who thought we would never see Nick Chubb play another down of football again. He came back incredibly good and finished off a fantastic career at the University of Georgia. It still amazes me that he got drafted as high as he did. In 2018, with the medical that he had on the knee, Cleveland Browns took a gamble, and that gamble absolutely paid off a thousand percent for them. But then you go to week two, of course, Monday Night Football in 2023, and the injury Nick suffered against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's brutal. It, you know, just to know that that guy's already gone through that once, and that guy is going to have to go through that same procedure again, um, and the rehab, and just you know, ask any athlete. You know, what rehab progress is, process is like, and it, it's brutal. You know, for the most part, you're kind of just a man, you know, on an island by yourself, just doing everything you can. So I think Nick probably is not sure what the best plan is for 2024 when he is healthy, how much he can play. The Browns, it shows me that they're probably, you know, in the same line. You know, it'll be nine years this coming October 10th since Nick's, Nick had the first injury, now coming back obviously from the second one. So that'd be a year and change removed. Just a brutal thing to happen to a great, great guy. Um, I'm not writing Nick Chubb off in any way whatsoever. I'm just saying that I think we believe and know that the 2024 season for Nick Chubb is an unknown. And with that information, and you look at the room the way it is, and look, you know, you guys know I am more positive about what Jerome Ford did last year than most of you. I think a lot of Jerome Ford's uh, deficiencies last season weren't necessarily so much on Jerome Ford as they were maybe on overall line overall offensive line plays in general kareem hunt is obviously not coming back even though kareem you know even if you look at it and you break it down some of the statistics are terrible the yards per carry last year the touchdowns were high and there is no morale factor that you can measure but kareem hunt obviously came in last year and did a huge huge service to the cleveland browns so now you look and you know you still have pierre strong and you know i had you know 
I had hopes that maybe Pierre Strong could contribute last year. I don't think the Browns gave him enough of an opportunity. And by what they've done so far this offseason, it may be that the Browns aren't going to ever give Pierre Strong that push. It's going to be after something where he just jumps up and takes it. And it's going to be really difficult when the Browns went out and signed a player like Naheem Hines, who can contribute in so many ways as a return man and receiver and, of course, a running back. Tante Foreman brought in. Not guaranteed much money on the contract he signed here with the Browns. Familiarity with the running back coach as he's here now with the Cleveland Browns. So you look at the way that room is, and you know, Jerome Ford, contract year. Contract year. Jerome Ford. I'm sorry, not a contract year. Jerome Ford is year three of four. So, you know, you're starting to get to the point where, you know, you're going to look for the future of Jerome Ford. But as much as he didn't do anything as a rookie, Jerome Ford did some really solid things for this team. Uh, in his second year, showed the receiving ability, showed rushing ability, has a huge game. So I remember the Baltimore Raven game on the road. He was phenomenal that day. Two long touchdown runs, one versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, one opened up the Indianapolis Colt game. But there is really no future to this Cleveland Browns running back row. There's just not. Um, you know, even if you just, even if you like Jerome, it, it's a one man band right now for the future going on. So for me, and with this news and seeing the way the numbers are actually on paper for what Nick is going to be paid in 2024, I think the Browns are more in on the running back position than they ever have been before as far as 2024 and certainly building that room towards the future. There's several positions the Browns are going to have to make that decision on this season. So it takes me back. And now Trey Benson just been in here recently, you know, Brown's looking at running backs, Audrick Estime, a player that I like, Raylan Allen. I know a lot of people like right out of Tennessee. I do believe the Browns are probably going to draft a running back and draft a running back pretty significantly high. It could be pick 54, could be pick, pick 85. The Browns need to, you know, start making sure of what they have in that room going to the future. If Nick comes in, plays well this year, I don't think there's any reason why the Browns and Nick Chubb would not be able to work out a contract for 2025. But I think it's it, it's Nick Chubb is just as big of unknown right now as we always felt it was going to be. Um, it, it's a lot to expect a guy to be able to come back from an injury like that, not just once, but twice, and still be the same overall effective player, dominating player that he was. And that's what Nick went through the first time and, and how Nick came out of it the first time. So to believe that he can do that a second time, I, I'm not going to lie, it's hard. It, it's, you know, science. It's, you know, I mean, it, you, you've seen the NFL, you've seen football, the athletics for over the years. Guys suffer really, really debilitating injuries. You know, there's only so much you can get back. And in professional sports, that tiniest of bit, a 1%, a 2%, is what makes the difference whether or not you are a capable athlete to go out there and contribute in professional sports. So, you know, nobody is you know, waving goodbye to Nick Chubb. It's going to see what the next version of Nick Chubb is. And it looks like, you know, the Browns running back room along with Nick Chubb, it's going to need some help to be the overall optimal running back room that it had been in Nick Chubb's prime years. I'm Jeff Lloyd. We're going to continue on here. Got a lot to cover here, getting closer and closer to the NFL draft. Appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. What's the first thing you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Are you going to read that book? You always tell people you're going to read, paint that Picasso you're always talking about. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing in your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find out what matters to you so you can do more of it. I got a lot of things I got to balance. I got to joke with my mom, my wife, my kids, do all my work as far as you know, my responsibilities as an employee. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Sometimes you have to make sure that you're putting yourself on the top pedestal. Therapy is the way to do that. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn.
Your latest Locked On Browns continues. Your host, Jeff Floyd. As always, we appreciate you all for making Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. If you're not part of the everyday crowd by now, make new plans, stand, and subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Obviously, breaking out the Hollywood Higgins today. He and Christian Kirks, he riding off into the sunset. Good Godspeed to both, both players. Now, there's obviously a lot of talk about the Browns' interest and, you know, bringing in what's going to be the next – offensive line for the Cleveland Browns, you know, as far as, you know, three tackles over 30 years old, your top three offensive tackles doing well, according to coach Kevin Stefanski in their rehabs from their respective injuries. But, you know, Jack Conklin, not getting any younger, Jack Conklin, series of injuries in his time in Tennessee, certainly a series of injuries in his time here with the Cleveland Browns. Jedrick Wills will be playing on the fifth year option here in the 2024 season. And Dewan Jones, who everybody thought was just an absolute darling of a rookie in 2023, himself coming back off a of season ending surgery. What are the expectations, of course? And, you know, with a guy like Dewan and his size, he's got to be really, really cognizant of his weight as he's going through all of this, because the last thing you want to do is end up putting in more stress, stress on this repaired knee. But what I want to kind of talk about here today and focus about here today is, you know, everybody considers left tackle one of the most important positions in the NFL. Rightfully so. You know, almost every quarterback is right-handed. You know, the blind side theory of it, this, that, and the other thing. I get all that. The Browns are really in a difficult position here as far as, you know, what is the future of what most everybody determines is the most important position on the offensive line, left tackle. Now, we thought maybe we'd get an opportunity for Dewan Jones to maybe show us, you know, if there is some capability, some potential for Dewan Jones to play left tackle for the Browns. Most of his offseason, sadly, has been spoken for due to a rehab process. So, uh, you know, making the transition now doesn't seem like it's going to be able to happen. You know, it's really hard to work on your game when you were rehabbing. That is why one of the things you try to talk about and you hear about so much with professional athletes is, you know, what they are doing with their off season. Are they improving? Are they rehabbing? If you remember, there's been people trying to use the knock against Deshaun Watson. So you look at that left tackle position and look, Browns don't have a first round pick. Browns first pick in this draft is pick 54. All understood. Absolutely. So the question is, is, you know, you're not necessarily going to get that left tackle of the future by drafting at 54, drafting at 85, you have a brand new offensive line coach and Andy Dickerson came over from the Seattle Seahawks. Somewhat of a relationship, of course, with Ethan Kaposik, who is here. So everyone believes the Browns are going to draft a tackle on this draft. You know, Blake Fisher from Notre Dame is a beast, just a tough, tough, tough young kid. Uh, Roger Rosengardner, Washington, another good player, good size. These guys didn't necessarily get the opportunity to play left tackle at the respective schools. You know, for Blake Fisher, Joe Alt seems to be the consensus top t- top offensive tackle off the board, going to go top 10. There was never an opportunity for Blake Fisher to play left tackle when you're playing with a player like Joe Alt. Rosen Gardner, same thing. His teammate, Fatanu, who is viewed as a consensus first-round pick. Some people like him at guard. Some people think he's going to have the ability to stay at left tackle, but viewed as a top 32 overall selection. So it wasn't really an opportunity for Rosen Gardner to get any reps on the left side as well. Kieran Amageji and, you know, from Yale is a very, very popular name, obviously, for this team. Um, you know, a lot of rumors from the Browns talking with Amageji, of course. And, you know, with all that, you know, the question is, and, you know, we had Pete Smith on yesterday, and Pete said, look, it's going to be difficult, of course, because, you know, it was a Yale player, you know, just because his tape was good while he was at Yale doesn't necessarily translate that, you know, all of a sudden this Yale guy is going to be able to come in and, you know, handle the pass rushers he's going to see in the NFL. He, you know, certainly, you know, seeing, you know, the guys that he's going to have to see, you know, Highsmith from Pittsburgh, who's become a very, very established player as far as a pass rusher in this league. You know, some people think that possibly I'm is somebody that could duck into guard, so for Andy Dickerson, you know, the tackle that you get, I think the question is going to be, and this is going to be a really, really big question, when Dewan Jones takes the field, and certainly whatever potential rookie you draft gets there is, is Andy Dickerson. And look, the Browns tried it. And look, Jedrick Wills just never became the left tackle the Browns hoped for. There are a lot of positives with Jedrick Wills. Tough guy. Fighter. You know, plays hurt. He gave everything to this franchise and he's got one more year here, 
but the, is, what's the future after that? And now you're tasking essentially Andy Dickerson with most likely either taking a left tackle from college who was good, not great, or taking a right tackle, could be Blake Fisher, could be Rosengarter, could be, of course, DeWan Jones. And now once again, trying to get a right tackle to be comfortable to play the left side for you. So it's a lot, of course, for Andy Dickerson. And, you know, for me, this is one of the talking points for me of this offseason, you know, the voluntary workouts when, of course, training camp is. Right now, I couldn't even tell you who left tackle two is. James Hudson's on the roster. I guess James Hudson has played some snaps at left tackle. But keep in mind, when it came down to it last year, they ran and found Jerron Christian off the street and kick James Hudson over the right side. <coughs> so that doesn't mean that, you know, James Hudson couldn't take a rep or two, but it also tells you that the Cleveland Browns believe that, you know, James Hudson, and we're getting late in James Hudson's first year, I mean, first contract here with the Browns, <coughs> you know, his time is probably not viewed as being a left tackle for this team. My guess would be a swing guard. My guess would be a swing offensive tackle. That's if he does get through the uh, 2024 training camp and make this roster. So Andy Dickerson is going to be tasked with a pretty, pretty major, you know, job in his first training camp with the Browns is who is going to be your backup left tackle. And is that backup left tackle going to be the left tackle of the future? I think Cleveland would like to get for 2025, a younger guy in there, Dewan Jones, of course, where he was drafted, his money fits, the names we're talking about, um, Ageji, of course, Rosen Garden, Blake Fisher. Browns could have an opportunity where they could get one of these guys to play a left tackle and have a serious, serious change as far as the money that would be afforded to the left tackle position. Jedrick Wills was always making good money, former 10th overall pick, certainly now playing on his fifth-year option, which has him somewhere around the you know ballpark area of $15 million. So, Andy Dickerson, congratulations on your new job here coaching the offensive line with the Cleveland Browns. And you are going to have a big, big project on your hands here in the first you know three to four months, of course, getting onto the field in volatile work, workouts and then trending through training camp. You are going to have to find and you are going to have to develop the Cleveland Browns left tackle of the future. See how it all plays out. We're going to continue on here. Your latest Locked On Browns. Appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. I've bought in tickets before. I bought tickets for a baseball game. The problem was, is he got there. I was lied to. The picture that I paid for was not the picture I had. And it was a little aggravating. Look, we're all consumers. We all work hard for our money. We want what we think we're getting. That's why I suggest you use Game Time. They are now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Like I said, you can be a last-minute ticket purchaser. This is the best app for that. And if you're a busy person with a family and you never know when you're going to have free time, it works out beautifully. They got flash deals. You save even more than exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. The lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. You're not getting fooled again. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Closing out your latest Lockdown Browns, your host, Jeff Floyd. Of course, I appreciate all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd, you're a bunch of filthy animals, but you're my filthy animals. Join the filthy animals. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Now, as much as I'm talking about, you know, 
new coaches and things that they're going to have to work on. And look, we've heard these names and we know these guys are here for now, but you know, you're here for two months and really only have communications with your guys. Now this week, voluntary workouts, it's time to start getting to work here a little bit. Browns have a new defensive line coach here in 2024, Jock Cesar and Cesar comes here and look, you've got some guys right away that, you know, are going to be guys that you're going to look at Cesar and say, you know, along with his assistant defensive line coach, Jordan Thomas and say, this is what we're looking at. You know, Isaiah McGuire, you know, Isaiah McGuire did play some last year, got his feet wet, did get his first NFL sack out of the way. But now if you're Cesar and you're Jordan Thomas, you're trying to push this guy for reps. You're trying to push this guy to take playing time away. Maybe Zedari Smith doesn't have to play as many reps. Maybe Ogbo can take a couple less reps per game. Alex Wright, his versatility inside and out, you know, but you want these guys to be contributors. So you look at McGuire, and this is one guy, of course, with Siaki, Siaki as well. Cesar was a former defensive tackle. You know, what, what can we do? And obviously for Ike, it was an extremely slow start last year. Injured. Then all of a sudden the Browns D-line, especially the defensive tackle room, was playing so well. There was no opportunity for Ika to get reps. Heck, there wasn't even opportunity for Ika to dress for games. Now you figure there's also going to be a rookie, probably drafted most likely into the defensive tackle room as well. And, you know, for Cesar and Jordan Thomas, and when you're the Browns and you've had three drafts in a row where you don't have a first round pick, your coaches got to work with what your staff gets you with what your front office gets you and say, Hey, look, I don't want to hear. We didn't have a first round pick. So this is what, no, 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 no. We got you a guy and he fits X, Y, Z profile. You know, he may not add be ideal. Da, da, da. That is why he did not go in the first round. That is why we got him where he did. We knew when we watched his tape, we knew when we evaluated him, we knew when we graded him, we thought these were his positives. We were thought these were his weaknesses. When you look at the weaknesses, the weaknesses are, can we improve that? Can we coach that up? In a lot of cases, can we coach that out? Which means you didn't like what he was doing. He had bad instincts, was taught bad technique, and you're basically going to erase the board and work with the young man exactly how you want him to do it within your defensive system. You have an incredible defensive coordinator in Jim Schwartz. His reputation and success with defensive linemen speaks for itself. but he's not going to be the one doing all this one-on-one -on -one training. He certainly is not going to be there in the individual periods of practice. And most likely he is not going to be sitting there focused on the fifth defensive end or the fifth, sixth defensive tackle. That's where guys like Cesare and Thomas are going to have to, you know, basically, you know, make the bacon. They are going to have to try to get these players to a higher plane. And it's a lot. It certainly is. And, you know, the Browns have been in this position, you know, it has been a long time. Jordan Elliott was the last significant, well, I'm sorry, Ika was all right. But even still, you did not throw anything significant at defensive tackle. You once spent a fourth round pick on Jordan Elliott. You spent a third round pick, of course, on Siaki Ika. It's not like the Browns have, you know, thrown at it. And with the veterans they've brought in and Maurice Hurst now in year two, and of course, Jefferson and Shelby Harris, there's not much work to be done with those guys. You know, you know what you've got in those guys and, you know, pretty formidable trio along, of course, with Dalvin Tomlinson. But you know that room as it stands right now, your top four defensive tackles are 29, 30, 31, and 32 years old. There's no way around it. You know, the you know, could be possible these guys don't play all 17, which means Ika, a possible rookie at times, are going to have to step up and be a part of this rotation. And to be fair, if you're the Browns and you're smart, you don't not necessarily all four of those guys, Hurst, Tomlinson, Harris, Jefferson to be playing 17 games because then you get to January, you get to playoff time and you got some tax taxed older veterans. It's the way it works. So they are, you know, a lot on the plate for new defensive line coach shocks. He's and his assistant, Jordan Thomas, the development um, of the McGuire Ika and most likely whatever rookie defensive tackle the Browns draft, it's going to be paramount here. And again, it's going to be part of the 2024 Cleveland Browns. And, you know, it, it, I, I know I get a lot of flack for it, and it, but it's just the way this team works. They are so much looking towards training camp 2025 as they are training camp 2024 and looking at the roster building for today and, of course, tomorrow and into the future.
it's, it, it's what you do. And if you're not doing it that way, you're not doing your job. You're doing your franchise a great disservice. So as far as the defensive tackle room, defensive line room, yes, it is a great top four at edge. Miles, Smith, Agbo, Wright, defensive tackle, Tomlinson, Harris, Hurst, Jefferson. There'd be a lot of teams in the NFL that would take those top eight at edge, at defensive tackle in a heartbeat for their franchise. Absolutely would. It is a great, great. But you do need to start looking long at your depth. You would like to get younger. Eventually, you would like to get a little bit cheaper and have some guys that they're going to work with. Most likely, another one is going to be brought in. And you have assistant coaches in Jacques Cesar and Jordan Thomas who are going to have a busy, busy summer not necessarily honing the skills or getting those extra reps with the star players, but trying to develop the players lower on the depth chart so that one day they can be higher up in the pecking order of the depth chart of the Cleveland Browns defensive line. I am Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate you all. We're getting closer and closer here to, of course, uh, the 2024 NFL draft Thursday from Detroit. Browns slated to start on Friday. I love this time of year. You guys know it. I appreciate you all who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd, you don't want to be part of the everyday crowd. You need to be part of the everyday crowd. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.